This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Windows Azure. Go to AssistExpress and Domain.com. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at E3 2011. That's right, E3 2011. And no, I'm not alone. It's Jen Cutter. Hi. And uh, just so you know, I have to deal with this for hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know. By the time you're watching this, of course you know. Everybody around me knows, but I don't. <laughs> I've stayed off Twitter. Okay, so don't tell me anything. But at least let me know if my dreams are going to be crushed that Nintendo is returning to hardcore gaming and we're going to get something with only a D-pad and two buttons. The floor is going to open here in like 15 minutes. I'm really excited. We're going to like rush in. Anyway, that's the episode. We're at E3. What are you excited to see? Uh, I'm excited to see Forza. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So are you going to come out of the closet now about the F1 thing? Yeah, I'm a huge racing geek. I'm not as big on rally, but I love it. And But yeah, F1 is where it's at. And Forza hopefully will be a worthy challenger to GT5, which is still, to me, uh, disappointing. You know, that was kind of the tell all along. Any Anybody that really followed your blog should have been able to figure this out with how much you love GT. Yeah, it was Gran Turismo after Gran Turismo after Gran Turismo after Gran Turismo. And then big Sony fails, so that was fun. Well, last year we had a lot of fun looking at some of the crazy stuff that the vendors had as far as like accessories are concerned, like crazy wheels and stuff. What was that one wheel you checked out last year? Uh, a CS was a Thrustmaster. Oh, that's right, the Thrustmaster. All right, uh, well, hopefully we can find some more good stuff like that. Stay tuned. Oh gosh, okay, it was really, really scary. Uh, they opened the gates, and then like everybody poured in, like zombies, and I don't know what happened, but I completely lost my crew, and like everyone you see behind me is in line to get to Nintendo to see whatever it is, and I still don't know what it is, and it's really scary. All these zombies, There's so many zombies everywhere. I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh, ah! It's Tom Lofthouse, he just took my camera. Okay, cool, I'm just gonna recruit him as my new crew. So, all right, anyway, I'll see you guys later, Jen and Paul, whenever you run off to and find you later. I'm going to go shoot the floor and stuff. Don't need you. It's like my show now, right? It's like Darren's show. Welcome to Darren's show. Stupid crew. All right. Come on, Tom. You're part of my crew now. I'm here in the Nintendo booth and it is like right behind me and I'm like covering my eyes because Jen's here checking out all the new Nintendo 3DS stuff and I'm just, ah, so hard not to look. But let's find out what's going on with the Nintendo 3DS. Jen, it's Star Fox 64. It is, it is Star Fox 64. I knew you were looking forward to it. This is like the one thing. I, I kept on saying like, I, I want to play the 3DS but unless it has Star Fox, it's dead to me, right? You did, exactly. That was precisely your words. Actually, I kind of want the original Star Fox as well. That would be nice. It Actually, be I pretty much just want to try to kill Peppy. <laughs> that might be, I know, against the spirit of the game. Do you get to do a barrel roll? Well, place. well, let's see. Can you do a barrel roll? Ah, do a barrel roll! Thank you so much.
still less than a year of the 3DS being out, this being the first big push of titles since, well, launch. What have you seen and what are you excited about, Jen? Well, we've seen a whole bunch of things now on the floor. So we started off with Kid Icarus, but just the multiplayer version of it. So it's not bad. Like, everyone's seen the clips on YouTube. You got the 3D, you got the behind the back, but I have a beef with Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus hates left-handed people. Why? Well, it's kind of weird. So you're using the uh, the analog stick to kind of move around. You're using the L button to shoot, but you can also use the A button. But in order to aim, you have to use the stylus. So it's like, well, okay, if I maybe like cross my hands, I can sort of do it. But that's just not going to work. So now I'm trying to use the stylus to aim right-handed, and oh my god, ah! And yeah, we got we got killed. Okay, what about uh, Mario and Sonic? I noticed that they've got a new game. What are they doing? Uh, yeah, I gotta admit, I'm kind of like. Uh, uh, way too into the uh, the Mario and Sonic at the blank games kind of thing because I love the Olympics and it's just pretty fun. It's one of those mindless things. You probably pass the game in, I don't know, an hour and it has nothing really to do with London. It just kind of has some of the artwork around and kind of just the, uh, the art motif. But there's really fun things like you're doing a lot of tilting, you're doing a lot of tapping. It's kind of like some music game stuff in there. It'll be really fun for kids. Okay, now you want to talk about how Kid Icarus hates left-handers. Star Fox 64, do a barrel roll, hates inverted people just the demo hopefully but yeah they had the controls all set up really wrong for those of us who know how to fly but i am super excited to that was the one title when the 3ds launched i said great bring back star fox and i was kind of hoping for the one on the snes but you know the 64 one was pretty good too it was all right there was more in there which is why i figured they did it but hey who's to say that the 3ds uh, original does not come to the store uh oh, and who's to say that you can't kill Peppy in it? All right, Mario Kart, what'd you see? Uh, Mario Kart, I was really surprised. I'm thinking, okay, it's another Mario Kart, well, you know, what's the big deal? But they had some neat twists that you discovered kind of by accident. Yeah, so they give you, what, uh, uh, like, like wings now, so that when you, like, go over jumps, you can kind of, like, hang glide. And I love this. When you go off the track, you know, you would, like, go in the, the drink, and then the little dude would come. Who, who is it that would pick you up? Lakitu. Lakitu, all right. So, so Lakitu, instead of coming and pick you up, you just get to drive underwater because you're Mario and, and you can do that. Now, speaking of Mario, Super Mario, super excited. What did you see? I saw a Tanuki suit, so I'm going to buy it. <laughs> okay, was that it? That's all there is to it? No, uh, it looks pretty good. It's kind of 3D, so think like Mario 64 on the 3DS. Mario 3 style, they brought back battleships. Battleships? Battleships, come on, Mario 3. Oh, you're talking about like with ah the under under the um the sewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chips, you know, so you're going through. I fought Bam Bam. It's pretty all right. Okay, cool. I can get down with that. Well, that's what we have seen so far. We're gonna hit the rest of the show floor. As it is right now, I still have not seen it. Oh yeah, one last one. Uh, Pokedex, right? We got the Pokedex. The Pokedex is out now. If you have a 3DS, you can download it literally right now from the store. But here. We have these wonderful things. I'm trying to hold it up. We'll get a close-up of this later to see if this will work for you guys. Because here you use the AR viewer to shoot this, and you'll get a Pokemon. I'm not going to say who it is. We'll let you guys uh, find it for yourself. But yeah, the Pokedex 3D, it's actually going to be, honestly to God, I think it's going to be harder than the game to collect them all. I think I just saw a Charmander. Peace. Okay, I'm looking down, looking down, I'm looking down. Keep looking down. All right, I'm looking at awesome boots. And... I see a video game. I see, oh, the same video game is on there. Ooh. Wait, wait. What is that thing? That is it. Looks like a Socrates system that I had when I was a child. That's... It looks like, you know, the bedroom. Is that the, is that the console or the controller? It's the console and the controller. Huh. I'm not no, so not sure how I feel about this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was messing with you. That's a gigantic controller. I thought the Xbox original controller was big. <laughs> no, it's like a new thing, but you can see that it's the same graphics in the controller and on the wall. I hope it's not the same Wii graphics. <laughs> we'll see more when we look at the uh, other games coming up. Well, I'm kind of glad that I stayed off Twitter because now I'm thoroughly amused and perplexed. Well, people thought the DS was going to be weird and it became this huge success. So we'll see how the third party support this and how it'll go. Oh, just think about the homebrew. It's a tablet. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Hopefully uh, Nintendo won't lock it down too hard and everybody gets in and has some fun. Uh, all right. Well, yay. I was hoping for maybe a GameCube controller. You wanted like the Christmas morning old school. Yay. And it's, like, I think this will be cool. I think it'll be all right. But yeah, we don't really know how it's going to go just yet. A uh -huh. little early, but we'll get our hands on it later and see what happens. Okay. Oh, he's shaking like a Morocco. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go. I'm so, obviously super impressed and not not perplexed at all. I mean, it's so intuitive. This is why 
couldn't tell you anything. I was like, there's nothing I can say that's going to be just you seeing it and going from there. Like, how am I going to explain that to somebody? Like, okay, it's a tablet with, you know, analog sticks and you shake it. It doesn't really convey what it is. <laughs> okay, let's go see some real gaming peripherals. As you know, there are a variety of tools on the market that let you remotely work on another person's computer, but the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, brought to you by Citrix. The reason? Well, the exceptional performance, the ease of use, and, well, let's not forget the security. No IT maintenance or updating is required. It's so fast you'll be viewing your client's computer and troubleshooting in just seconds, plus support client's computers even when they're not at their computers. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash HAK5. Hey, go figure. The PNY guys actually trust me with their 580 while they left their booth, and I'm just like hanging out here, checking out some of their new products for you guys that might be PC enthusiasts that want some water cooling, but you don't want to, I don't know, go over to like Colleen's machine shop or something in Oakland to do something custom. I know, I know, I know. Right? So basically, this company, Asatech, you may have known them from, I don't know, they worked with Corsair on the, uh, what was it called, the H50 and the H70. It's a closed unit water cooling system. Well, they've done the same thing. They partnered with PNY this time to offer that kind of stuff for your typical graphics card. This here being a uh, GTX 580 from NVIDIA. So this is your air-cooled brethren. And then here we go. We've got some uh, of the GTX 580s with water cooling. These come in two configurations here. You can either get just the single card coming up here to a radiator, or you can get a card that goes to the CPU plate and then to a radiator, kind of two in one, you know, whether you want to do SLI or whatnot. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is probably not going to be cheap. And no, it's not. Well, you're talking about high-end graphics cards for one. So if you're already spending that kind of money, I understand you completely. But uh, for the GPU only solution, you're talking about a little bit like $100 more than what you would spend for that kind of. So it's a little bit of a premium uh, for the with the GPU combo, it's $150 more. So you know, you got to kind of weigh that if you want to like, you know, do your own homebrew. But if you're afraid of that or you just can't be bothered, they have a five year warranty on these things. So you can just pop one in your box, not have to worry about it. Hopefully eBay in a year when NVIDIA comes out with a 680, 780, 980s, whatever they got going. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that right there is Asatex technology and the new PNY product. And it's all in this beautiful box here from Origin. Hey, you guys know that we're always looking for the greatest devices here at the E3 2011 Expo, and that's why I came over to Susan at Jack Pacific to check out this device from Barbarella, Queen of the Universe, right? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Is this, in fact, the real device from uh, Barbarella? This is, in fact, the real IMT Pain mic. Oh, uh, okay. So what is the IMT Pain mic? The IMT Pain mic uh, is a microphone that features voice modification technology to sound just like T-Pain the rapper and other artists that use this technology. Well, explain to Jen here, because, I mean, I totally know who T-Pain is, but Jen doesn't. So. So tell Jen, what, what, who's T-Pain? T-Pain would be a uh, multiple Grammy award winning rapper and recording artist and producer. I'm sure all the hackers in our audience knew that. Yes, anyone who listens to radio knew that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'm the only one that's not down with mainstream media. Uh, but, but how does the device work? So the device works, um, you turn it on and you can uh, sound like this, you talk into this, the speaker's down here, and then you can sing along, you can throw on a beat if you like. And you can sound like T-Pain by hitting the T-Pain effect button. So you sound like T-Pain microphone. Well, since Jen loves karaoke, she's going to sing uh, Over the Rainbow for us with that, right, Jen? <laughs> Which button here? This one? Oh, so I hit and hold that, and then it'll work? And then go at it. Yeah, so, so while Jen sings us uh, <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow, you can go ahead and let me know, does this hook up to my computer? Does it hook up to an amp? How does it work? It's a freestanding microphone, and you can pop off the bottom, and um, if you want to share your re recordings, sorry. That's all right. Um, it goes right into your USB port, and you can download your songs, upload them to Facebook, so all your, you know, peeps can hear you rap away like the MC that you secretly are. And um, it comes in four different variations. There's three beats. It's on $39.99. It goes on sale in August. I love it. All right, Jen, take it away. All right, what if I want to kill the beat? Okay, change the beat there. You want to take it off, just hit it to the top. 
fast. Okay. And then hit the T back. Yes, okay, I know somewhere over the rainbow. I had to think about that. All right, holding the button. Actually, uh, can we get some O Canada? Oh. Come on, please, Jen. All please, right, Jen. All right, all right. Fine. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all my sons command. With glowing hearts we see behind the true north strong and free. And that's all you're getting. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. <laughs> and thank you. Best device of the con so far. You can find this where online? Um, you can go. You can buy it at any retailer starting in August, and it pre-sales at ToysRUs.com right now with limited quantities. Wherever fine Barbarella products are sold. Welcome back. I'm Jason. Last week we talked about getting your Windows Azure project off the ground. This week we're going to talk about getting our Windows Azure project off the ground, the Hack5 Wi-Fi project. So let's dive into the sample project we created last week. Open up the default.aspx file. Inside here I went ahead and cleaned out all of the existing uh, C Sharp and uh, ASP uh, code and went ahead and did our own HTML for the Bing map that we're going to throw in here to display the uploaded KMLs with the Wi-Fi points. We're going to go ahead and give it a title, Hack5 Wi-Fi map, pretty self-explanatory. Throw in some scripts, some local, some not. Uh, the local script is the HTML Bing map client and then we're going to throw a div underneath that to define our map area. I went ahead, you know, define the map area, then define the main map. And then inside of this, I went ahead to width, height, 100%, so it takes up the entire screen size here. The commented output you see here is the upload link, so you can upload your KMLs, which we'll cover next week. Let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript file. And inside this JavaScript file, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's the Bing map client provided to you from Microsoft. So inside the Bing Map HTML client, the thing that we're going to want to replace is the Bing Map credential or the map credential that you're going to get from bingmapportal.com. And once you get your own key, replace it, you're good to go. Go ahead and hit the run button. It's going to go run, run in a simulator and pop up a web browser. So there it is, our Bing Map running on our simulator at localhost at port 81 or port 82, depending on you know, how many simulators you guys have running. So next week, we're gonna be uploading KML to the cloud to throw up on this Bing map. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with Windows Azure, so follow me on Twitter, at Applebaum. I want to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsor, Windows Azure. As you know, they are the cloud platform for developers that lets you focus on building and running apps instead of infrastructure. It has scalable pay-as-you-go capacity, meaning developers don't have to wait to develop, get faster speed to market, and generate and meet immediate demand. Only rent what you need when you need it. It's a rich platform with built-in connectivity and development tools, meaning you can focus on business logic and get a head start on time to market. Flexible development gives you the ability to run on Windows Azure on your own systems. With Windows Azure Burst Capacity, you can deploy with confidence, running your apps where and when it makes sense without having to worry about overwhelming systems. To learn more about everything you need to start developing with Windows Azure, check out www.microsoft.com slash cloud slash Windows Azure. say, Jen, that I love the light on your camera. <laughs> Remember that scene in Close Encounters where they had all the big lights on and the spaceship was landing? It's just like that. It's <laughs> blinding me, but it's a lot of fun. And Jen, we're here today to talk about this. This is brand new for Mad Cats. Yeah. Uh, this is coming out for the holiday season 2011. This is our brand new wireless four-speed back racing wheel for the Xbox 360. Isn't nice. it pretty? It's very nice. Now that does not look like plastic. It is not plastic. No, it's absolutely not plastic. So this has been designed really uh, for use with Forza 4. It's, it's mm -hmm. ideal for Forza 4, even though you can use it with all Xbox 360 racing games. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do here at Mancats is make a real quality wheel with quality construction. So we've gone from plastic to aluminium. So it's a solid metal design. Mm -hmm. We didn't want it to look like a toy. We wanted it to look like a, a proper, proper racing wheel. Yeah. And that's because it's got force feedback inside, right? So it's going to go through quite a lot of punishment. 
and we certainly didn't want it to look like a hi there's a camera there uh, we certainly didn't want it to look like a kiddie toy we wanted it to look yeah. like a, a proper yeah. yeah now so for the force feedback now this thing is wireless but do you have to plug it in for the feedback ah sadly you do the problem is the force feedback requires a lot of energy and it's just not practical to run that off power so uh, if you don't want to use the uh, if you don't want to use the force feedback then uh, you don't have to but it's still going to require an AC adapter so but that's okay. the only wire so you don't actually have to plug it into the console but it does come with an AC adapter that you need to plug in all right so I see we've got the Fabio paddle shifters here we've got the sequential shifter here yes. and I see this lovely little hole you see a lovely little hole lovely I little love hole. me a lovely little hole <laughs> and, uh, and what it means is it, it means you can actually pop off the, the sequential stick shifter and I'm not going to do it on this model just in case because uh, this is an early sample but it means you can put it either in the left or right handed side so if you're a left handed driver you can have it on the left hand side if you're a right handed driver vice versa or if you're driving a British or Japanese car you can change the position of the sequential shifter plus you can also use this for a handbrake if you're playing something like Dirt 3 you can use it to implement the handbrake command uh, so around the rear here as well yeah you've got the paddle shifters uh, you've got the L3 and R3 buttons as well here so you've got your full uh, complement of, of button controls uh, plus this is really neat I think you're gonna like this gem this here is a PC input so it allows you to connect up to your PC and it allows you to flash the firmware on the wheel for future updates on games so if uh, a game comes out that implements a new kind of false feedback uh, you can reflash the firmware and make sure that it's forward and backward compatible with all Xbox 360 racing games excellent now okay so PC input you open the door there will this work on the PC no it won't work on the PC sadly <laughs> it won't officially work on the PC this is for use with Xbox 360 only but my advice to you is Forza 4 is awesome. It's only on the Xbox 360. Go and buy an Xbox 360 and buy the perfect wheel to go alongside it. All right, thank you very much, Alex. Jen, you're welcome. I'm going to go off for another cheesy ball right now. All right. All right, take, take care. care. I'm here checking out the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. I'm sure you guys have read all about this. It's got the dual 1 gigahertz processor in it. It's got the NVIDIA Tegra front-facing, rear-facing, all the good stuff you would expect from a honeycomb tablet from Android. But one of the things I asked is, you know, how do you get the great content on here that it can play with this uh, this NVIDIA Tegra chip? Well, NVIDIA has gone ahead and actually, rather than reinvent the wheel, as you guys know if you're an Android fan, there's tons of great stuff in the marketplace, but how do you find it? NVIDIA has come up with the Tegra Zone. Right now, they're only featuring 13 apps in here, but these are all optimized for the platform. Say I come in here to the Pinball HD for Tegra, say get it now, it actually just pushes me over to the Android marketplace, not reinventing the wheel, but a great way to find all of the stuff that is going to showcase the power of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. It's good, I wish I could walk away with it. And uh, that is what's happening with Samsung and Nvidia right now. If you're building a video site or your website has a play button, a .tv domain is the way to go. .tv websites let you showcase your original content and create a unique site, not just another YouTube channel. Go to domain.com and search for the perfect .tv domain for your new idea. Then use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout to save an extra 15%. Looking for hosting? Save 15% on that too at domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com I'm here with Robin from Arrowhead Studios to talk about Magicka. Magicka was one of my favorite games earlier this year, and of course you all read my review at GamePro. Just so you know about it, but in case you are completely new to Magicka, we're just going to do a quick overview. Right, uh, Magicka is a four-player co-op game set in a fancy environment. Uh, with a lot of cliches, a lot of humor, where you take the role of a wizard who has to save the world from an ancient evil, uh, utilizing a dynamic spell casting system which allows players to create their own spells using the many different elements in the game, sort of crafting their spells on the spot, uh, casting them in many different ways. Yeah, there was a lot of strategy involved, a lot of kind of interesting twists, a lot of yeah. plays on the old classics, and there was the expansion, the Vietnam expansion, yeah. so what did that add to it? Oh, uh, I mean, Vietnam was sort of like an idea that just came to us when DICE released their Battlefield Vietnam. We started making fun of it, like, oh, we should release a Vietnam expansion. Uh, and we pitched it to Paradox and they went like, yeah, okay. Yeah, Wizards in Vietnam, it yeah. totally works, oh, you know. Of course. Got uh, napalm, got guns. Yeah, sure, <laughs> no problem. Uh, we already had uh, M60 in the game, so it wasn't really that far off, really. Uh, but yeah, Vietnam was a very successful release as well, and it was a lot of fun. So. 
right. Now you guys are using Magico for a good purpose. You guys are doing a charity thing for Japan. What's that about? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we released a Nippon DLC just like uh, a week ago or so. Uh, it's a pretty simple DLC where you get a new robe, uh, the, the Nippon robe, armed with a very good katana and a bamboo staff. And I mean, just to, to collect some money for the, the relief efforts in Japan. So. Yeah, it's nice and cheap. I recommend picking it up if you have the main game. Yeah. Buy the main game too. Now, finally, we have PvP in the game. This was something we were expecting earlier, but now it's ready to go. Yep. What have you added to the PvP aspect? Well, what we did primarily was that we had to make a lot of changes to the lobby system in the game. Uh, this is updated as well for the campaign and the challenges. Uh, it makes it easier for players to join in while the hosts are changing settings for the game. And we have like the new pack system, which allows the host to to choose what items and magics he wanna have available in the match. So sometimes people feel like vortex, crash the desktop. We don't wanna have those magics. Let's remove them and so on. All right. Now, so is it still just the four players in one arena, just duking it out? Yeah, four players, one arena, duking it out. That pretty much sums it up. Uh, there are three modes, though. We have the the classic death match. Brawl, which is kind of like Super Smash Bros, where you have a set amount of lives. Once your lives are out, you are out. Uh, we also have the Creators Tourney, which is based off uh, a PvP mode that one of our community members did. So it's a bit more balanced, a bit more competitive oriented. Uh, you should definitely check that one out when it's out. Now, uh, Magic is something I have played a lot. And if I'm bringing in new people, is there any kind of handicap system where I can make myself slightly weaker than them? Or is it all, well, I guess you better learn. Uh, I think the last part was probably the correct one. You just try to teach them and, uh, I don't know, go at it. Of course, normally I would recommend that. So why don't you play with a gamepad and they play with a mouse and keyboard? But I've heard rumors that you're pretty handy with the gamepad. Yeah, so. I, say, I, I can beat any keyboard player with the gamepad. And I'll prove that when we start doing some Hack 5 matches. Sounds good. Yeah, but no, there's not really any handicaps either, otherwise than that. So. Now, what about rankings? Is there any kind of ranking system in the game? If you, is, if you do random, or should you just bring your friends along? Yeah, just bring your friends along. I would recommend it, but of course you can play. Uh, but we don't have any matchmaking or anything like that. There are no really... There are some leaderboards, of course, but we don't have a ranking system like that. So I guess people better join the forums, find some good people to play with. That's probably a good idea, in case you don't want to like buy the game for some friends and force them to play with you. Yes, that, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. So what's coming up in the future for Magicka? Anything you can tell us? Oh, so few things I can tell you. Um, we have a lot of good ideas. Uh, there will definitely be at least one major update during the summer. can tell you what it is. Uh, we also have a couple of more major updates planned for autumn and winter. Uh, then along the way there will always be a few new patches, a couple like more minor DLCs, a few new robes, maybe new maps. All right, so that's a lot to look forward to for Magic of Fans, and hopefully I'll go see you guys on Steam. I'm here with Sam from Nyko to talk about the first accessory for the Kinect. I'm really excited about this, I'm going to tell you what the use is after, but first, Sam, give us the lowdown. So we're here showing off Nyko's new Kinect, Zoom for Kinect. Uh, the Zoom is the first accessory that we built for the Kinect, and what it is is an optical lens attachment that reduces the play space requirement for Kinect by 40%. So where normally you would need 8 to 10 feet of space behind the Kinect to be able to play, now that's reduced to about 6 to 8 feet. So if you're in a small apartment, cramped living room, dorm room, anything like that, this is really going to enable you to play Kinect in a smaller space. Yeah, well that helps for me because when I first got my Kinect, I had to redo my entire game room to get enough space and get solar lights put in and stuff. But now I moved. Now I have way less space and I'm really excited about this and also the homebrew application is pretty great. Uh -huh. Because now you can use all this stuff at your computer without having to be eight feet behind it. So now you can play with all that great Connect Homebrew, which I'll be showing you later on Hack 5, and be at your computer. Exactly, and it's a really simple accessory. It just clips right on. It's going to be out August 16th, 2999, compatible with any Connect game or software, and uh, works right out of the box. All right, now where can they get this? Um, it'll be a nationwide launch, and it'll be available at all major retailers. Um, heading to Europe and Asia shortly after that. All right, thank you very much, Sam. No problem, thank you. Once again, another successful E3. Nobody died. Well, actually, <laughs> a few people died, but I mean, that's to be expected. Yeah. yeah, we won't miss they them. They were NPCs. We didn't care. Red shirts.
<laughs> what did you see that we weren't able to cover in the previous blocks? Uh, well, I saw Elder Scrolls Skyrim, the uh, the very new game coming out. It we looks. Have gone and seen that I know. With you. Well, Bethesda kept them behind closed doors. There was no filming allowed. They let one of us in. <laughs> All right, well, since we don't have the B-roll for it, just give me the synopsis. What should I expect? It's fantasy. It's awesome. It's a huge world. They have this thing called Radiant Story. So quests will be changing depending on how you want to play. You don't have to pick a class. So pick up a sword, you're a warrior. If you want to use one-hand sword, one-hand magic, you can do that. So you don't have to play the game like 40 other times yes. to get all of the content. It's a big enough game as it is. No one has that kind of time. So I really love the way it looks. You're going to fight a lot of dragons. I like fighting dragons. Nice. I liked what we saw Gorgeous. from uh, CD Projekt Red, yes. uh, Witcher 2 looks pretty awesome. I'm going to get that as soon as I get home. I know it's out for PC. Mm -hmm. They were showing off their, uh, I don't want to say port, but you know, it coming to Adaptation the Xbox. Adaptation is what they're saying. Sure. And uh, I gotta say, for the alpha slash pre-alpha version that they showed there, this thing is going to look incredible. You're not really gonna like if you don't have a high-end PC, you might want to wait till the end of the year and, and get the uh, get it controller. on the 360. Yeah. I love the interface, the way they did. It's gonna be really quick, really adapted to the sticks. Nice, lots of fun, very mature. So your younger players out there, there's oh, well, a for the younger players, Disney Universe that looked pretty cool. I like it. Uh, it's very little Big Planet vibe. I kind of, uh, they said over 40 of the Disney characters. So you got kind of Aladdin, you've got Tron. So I was playing as Pumbaa with a character, Tron, in this kind of platformer stuff. Like, think you Epic know, Mickey. You know, it looked just like Epic Mickey. Exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it might be the same engine. Except yeah. that you're not going to have this huge story. There's no, it's going to be slightly less annoying puzzles. And it's just like a bash. Lego games, kind of like the Lego games, because you can drop in, drop out really quick, really cute. Yeah, like that new I Lego game. I can't wait. I'm actually looking forward well, to what it. What is it? New. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the new Lego. Okay, fine, fine. It's been out for a while. But the Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, the video game that's based on a toy that's based on a movie that's based on a ride that was fabricated from Walt Disney's imagination. Thank you yes. very much. And if you are interested in that, get it on the console, not the PC. They kind of work the PC port. Just yeah. trying to save you some money. Right. Okay. We actually saw one. <laughs> One piece of hardware. Yeah. This is so sad. I was really hoping that the, anyway, um, the, the one piece of cool hardware that we saw, I don't know why we didn't see this at CES uh, this year. It's uh, basically uh, Razer, the people that make those ridiculous mice, they've got this uh, keyboard kind of prototype. And at first you walk up to it and you're like, oh, dude, it's like the Optimus keyboard. It's got the OLED keys. And no, uh, they just They made cheated. They, they were smart. They just put an entire LCD under the key panel, and then all of the keys are uh, like bubble kind of They kind of magnify it so you can see it. And it looks really good. It's not cloudy at all. It makes everything so, pop. So that was the prototype, and we got to see the actual product. It's for the Knights of the Old Republic game. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like your basic you know, key gamer keyboard that you would expect, like yeah. you know, your G15s and whatnot, except it's got like a little side thing to the right with all your custom keys mm -hmm. and a touch screen area that kind of acts as a mouse. And, uh, and it's an actual display. It has gestures. Gestures too. Gestures. It's got tons of those. We're like, tired. All Stay six three. of them. We are tired. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another. Uh, you know, we do 52 weeks of, of hacking, and every now and then we just gotta kind of take a break, yeah. go to LA where it's ridiculous, and and see video games because hackers like video games. Yeah, exactly. And this time we did 52 weeks, not 54. There's there's two less <laughs> we weeks count. in my year now. All right, so always a pleasure to have you on the show. Where thank can you. people find more? Oh, well, I will link everything from jencutter.com. That is Jen with two N's as always, and at Jen Cutter for Twitter. Thank you so much. Okay, and of course, next week, back to the hacking, we will find out the secrets of the black hat. Or will we? I don't know. Find Come. out. Ready? Oh, recording? Yeah? Ready? All right, cool. And you don't have headphones, so we're just going to assume it's not peaking like a mofo, because mine peaked like a mofo earlier. This amount of gin will take care of that. <laughs> mofos peak like mofos. Do like a big, like, fast whip. Woo! Like, uh, I'm probably going to start this over, because I really messed that up, and yay! We're going to do this quick before some Nintendo guy comes and is like, what the fuck are you doing? And I found something straight from that thing where my mind stops working because it's after five. <laughs> Can't change the. Oh, wait a second. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now it's inverted. That's the way it's meant to be played. Ask Steve Jobs, he'll tell you you're holding it wrong. <laughs> <laughs>